guys, Jason Shellcross of the Fantasy Football Sackos here for episode three. Thank you to everybody that's sticking with us through this. Um, we, we appreciate all the likes, listens, and shares. We've gotten uh, family, friends. Everybody's been super supportive. So quick shout out to them. Uh, episode three, we got a lot of uh, fun stuff lined up today. We're going to be talking about some of our best fantasy football advice And then why you or your friends should play fantasy football if you haven't before or, you know, what we think the biggest benefits have been from participating in fantasy football over the years and decades now that we've been playing. Um, Stick with us. It's going to be a fun one. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast with your hosts, Jason Shawcross and Alex Crow. Let's go! All right, how we doing? Uh, Jason Shawcross, Alex Krogh, the Fantasy Football Sackos, back here for episode three. Still have not self canceled. We are staying strong. Alex, give us your latest quarantine update, please. Has there ever been a good episode three of anything ever? What, so like, <laughs> of course. So we we have yeah we have Iron Man three, which I guess is somewhat underrated, but like the first two are probably better. Okay. Uh, episode three is Star Wars. I mean, they really like Anakin almost dies. Sorry, spoilers. Um, you have to say becomes, spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, he becomes Darth Vader, so I guess that's cool. But otherwise, there probably wasn't really anything that great in that. So if, if we're going to take like the Star Wars model, then maybe episodes four, five, and six will be okay. And then nobody will have any idea what we're talking about in seven, eight, and nine. Watch out for episodes seven, eight, and nine, though. There's going to be a plot twist. <laughs> maybe. Maybe a little bit of one. ridiculous. Yeah, the, the, so episode three, pretty excited. I will say that People are listening to us, which is which is somewhat exciting. Unbelievable. I I can't believe it. I, I think though the one piece of advice that people have actually listened to the most is that more men are using conditioner in their hair. Ah, after yes. We talked about it. So <laughs> I feel like I feel like I'm really doing a good job of trying to help American men just use conditioner because I feel like it has such a negative connotation to it. And the, the two-in-ones and the three-in-ones with the conditioner just doesn't cut it. No, so we've graduated I, to separate bottles. For everybody again. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I just wanted to uh, uh, kind of push, <laughs> push the importance of the conditioner once again in episode three. You can, you can see I have now, I have ditched the hat. I have now gotten my quarantine cut. That's what I'm calling it. Um my fiance, for everybody that's concerned that I put people at risk to get a haircut done, uh, my fiance did it at home with like a half in the garbage can pair of uh, uh, shears. So we're fine. It was a quarantine cut at home. We're safe, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but the 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 fantasy football sackos, I am pleasure proud. Could not be more excited to announce. We are international, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> really? <laughs> wow. If you can believe it, one of our downloads comes all the way from the the lovely country of Turkey. <laughs> I was going to guess Russia. <laughs> yeah, I, I, man, I, I would have put some heavy money on Russia. If that's too bad. <laughs> so the the fantasy football sackos are now international. <laughs> Oh man, they they've heard far and wide about um, <laughs> Alex's beard. I think our the the social media meme gate is uh, may have had something to do with that. Yeah. Uh-huh. So if 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 I could just pick a bone, uh, or is that a, is that even a thing? I have a bone to pick. Bone to pick. There you go. We got there. Uh, yeah, it was there. So I don't know who our social media coordinator is. I, I don't know who we hired to coordinate our social media. Uh, if you haven't followed us already, by the way, uh, the FF Stack is on Twitter. Find us on Facebook. We're on Instagram too. We're, we're going places. Apparently Turkey. The Turkey, so baby. I, Great sandwiches. Yeah, so, 
So I, I have a bone to pick with our social media <laughs> coordinator because it seems like there's gifs of Jason laughing. There's gifs of me shaking my head red faced and like freaking out over something Jason said. So it's very pro one side, very, very con or negative towards the other. Is it and then GIF also I'm or gif. Yeah, it's, it's I don't isn't it GIF? <laughs> No, I don't Damn know. It. Okay, go uh, on. <laughs> all right, we're, well, somebody will correct us. Yeah, and who then, knows? And then somebody takes a complete cheap shot at me and puts me next to freaking Ryan Fitzpatrick and with his with his beard and his hair and said my plans for this year. And then it's my picture next under twenty twenty. It's a complete <laughs> cheap shot. So I don't, I don't know who our social media coordinator is. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna have to have a talk with them. Because uh, if they t- keep taking these uh, shots at me, we're going to have an issue. If you're not following the fantasy football sackers on social media, you are missing out between that hot, hot fire fantasy football advice and, and the memes. I don't know if there's any other account I would want to follow. <laughs> All right. Let's get into a little bit of newsy stuff. Um, did you watch the match? Yesterday, I saw highlights of them talking smack with Charles Barkley. I saw Tom Brady's pants ripped. I saw Tom Brady hole out from whatever 50, 75 yards. Otherwise, it, that was ridiculous. Yeah, otherwise, it just it just rained a lot, right? Yeah, it, it rained the whole time. Um, left a little bit to be desired. Wish we had some nicer weather. They kept showing highlights of the day before. Evidently, they all went out and played a practice round. I wish they would have just played like. I wish they would have made them drink alcohol. Yes, they need a snack cart. So that way they could have, like, I just want to put Tom Brady and Peyton Manning in a room and just have them go at each other verbally because Peyton Manning might be the funniest guy in the entire world. At one point, he's giving an interview while Tom Brady is hitting chip shots behind him, practicing. And I did uh, see this. he starts he starts talking about who he wish he had as his caddy. He goes, well, I wanted to bring Eli, but he was busy. And so then I thought about bringing Nick Foles <laughs> and Brady stopped when he was doing. He turned around and goes, cheap shot, man, cheap shot. Because <laughs> he wanted to try and get into Brady's head. But oh, and then he made fun of Gronk and, and Gronk, you know. Well, twenty four seven champ, by the way, for the WWE right now. Yeah, was a, I was like, older. he's like, well, it's nice that you know you were able to talk Gronk into into coming back. You know, Gronk takes a year off football. Gronk goes and wrestles. Gronk comes back for you. <laughs> it's too much. Yeah, but I mean, Peyton, Peyton Manning had Dallas Clark do the same thing for him. True. I mean, Dallas Clark obviously isn't Gronk, but I mean, they no. did similar things. Certainly not in personality or probably beer drinking ability, but (laughs) Um, the match was great. I hope that they do something else like it. I would pay to see Peyton Manning do anything. Um, They they need more beer or or hard alcohol for them to drink. Uh, And then also just in general, like golfers need to golf in shorts more often because they, it comes off more like they're like a common person instead of like, so you know, I, I've never worn a pair of dress pants on a golf course before. Um, so Brady's they, they should just wear just wear shorts. Brady slacks ripped right in the middle of his butt, and he posts up the picture to Twitter. Or I don't know if he posted the picture or not, but he tweets and he goes. Uh, I guess my pants wanted in on social distance. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. Um, if you haven't watched the match, I, I suggest like looking up the YouTube clips of at least Peyton talking because it was funny. And watch Tom Brady hit an incredible chip shot from about, I don't know, 50, 75 yards. Um, now, the next little piece of actual football news here is the... New York football jets signed Joe Flacco this week. Do you care? No. (laughs) It's like the most mediocre thing the jets could have done. And then they made such a huge deal about it. Speaking of social media, 
everywhere. They were talking about, oh, well, thank God we had this GM who was involved with the Ravens at the time that the Ravens drafted him because there was that connection that brought Joe Flacco to us. It's like, okay, Joe Flacco's like 35 and a bum. Why are we bragging about Joe Flacco right now? The, the only reason the Jets should brag about getting Joe Flacco is if they hired him to replace Adam Gase as their head coach. Yes. Amen to that. Amen to that. If you haven't, if you haven't listened to our podcast before, um, I would encourage you strongly to go back and uh, listen to the first podcast where we discuss how bad the Jets are more in depth. Uh, and Adam Gase. Um, all right. So moving into our first segment here, we're going to be giving some fantasy tidbits, little tidbits of fantasy so nuggets. advice. Nuggets. Sorry, you're right. Nuggets. And then there's going to be sauce. Everybody loves nuggets. Everybody loves nuggets. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, McDonald's sponsor us. All right. Never mind. <laughs> all right alex yeah uh, yeah i'll take mcdonald's nugs I, all nugs are good who am i kidding uh, uh, <laughs> as as far as nugs go i i do have some nugs so my first little okay. nugget is to when you're when you're going into your draft kind of do an analysis of and, and this might sound kind of basic but you want people on your team that are on real football teams that score more points. You want the, the best players on the best teams? Yeah, I, I know it's really big groundbreaking stuff from, from a Nugget perspective, so I, I'm sorry if I just blew your mind. But we could get into some here, really interesting either-ors with that as far as who yeah. you would prefer because there's less desirable people that – like, all right, I guess the example I'm thinking of that's coming to mind is Joe Mixon is not on a good team. He is routinely the last couple of years now being drafted in the first round, probably will be again this year. But unless he was Joe Burrow is ranked offense last year. Yeah. And so unless Joe Burrow is a revelation, which he looks amazing, he could be great. Um, and that offense completely turns around and makes it. Just say into the top third of the league, top 10. Um, so you're saying stay away from Joe Mixon, pivot to somebody else on a better team. And as, I an, get as that. an example, so so just, just hear me out. So a lot of times when a team is bad offensively, they don't just suddenly get good. Right. Uh, there are some there are some examples of where they're really good and they might fall off a little bit, but even their floor is still relatively high. So think about this. Of the teams that were in like the bottom half of the league in 2018, most of them stayed in the bottom half of the league in 2019. Arizona from the 32nd worst offense to the 17th best offense. So, you know, Arizona was terrible, but they brought in a new head coach. They brought in a new quarterback. So in those situations, there's clear changes happening. As an example, the last three years, the team that has the, the worst average from a points per game perspective, is the Buffalo Bills. So, oh. do you? So they're fought, like everybody's high on the Buffalo Bills this year. I think they're going to be pretty good, but from a points per game perspective, they only averaged nineteen point six points a game last year, and it was sixteen and seventeen the two years before that. So sometimes it's just kind of in the DNA of the team as far as if they're a good offensive team. So you know, think about Kansas City, think about New Orleans. New England, Tampa Bay, Seattle, Atlanta, Dallas, maybe. So, you know, those are some teams that are going to consistently be in the, the upper part of the league. If they're a bad team, just stay away from them. Try to, if you know, to your point, if you have to decide between two players, you're generally going to want the person on the better team. All right. So I want to put this to the, to the test here a little bit because, and I want to, Stick with a couple of teams that you even mentioned. The hype train could not be moving any faster than it is right now for Edwards Hilaire of the Chiefs. I believe that we talked before we started recording and you're saying that you've seen Mox now where he's going top 10 overall and in the first round. 
Would you take Edwards Hilaire over Joe Mixon? <laughs> You're talking uh, good team, right? Right now, would I? Or can I can I wait till training camp? I, I don't I don't know right now. I think the answer is probably no. If Andy Reid, so Andy Reid, thank God, with Kareem Hunt when Kareem Hunt was a rookie. Andy Reid pulled no punches. He didn't censor or do the gimmicky Pete Carroll, Bill Belichick mm-hmm. thing. He came right out and said, Kareem Hunt's our guy, and he's going to be the ever, every down back for us this year. So he's always been straightforward like that. And so I think once camp starts, if I, I would get not that be straightforward, surprised. let's go. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, if, he's, if he comes yeah. out and says that Edward Hilaire is our guy and he's starting, then – then are you taking him in the first round? Sure. Depends wow. on who else is there. I, I mean, it, it just depends, you know, yeah. Are, yeah, are the wide receivers that you want there, you know, can you take the best wide receiver instead of the 10th best running back? Probably going to take the best wide receiver. Yeah. I just meant so if he comes out and says depends. that, are you taking him over Joe Mixon? Yes. Are you taking him over Fournette? Again, awful team. Uh, let's say no. Okay. Oh man. All right. See, so there's, that's, that's going to be interesting to see where he goes. It's going to be interesting to see where he goes. I think somebody in most leagues is going to take him. I don't think he'll make it probably much, uh, much past like this top half of the second round. Like, I I feel like that's as far as anybody's going to let him fall just because the potential of that offense is immense with Pat Mahomes. Um, Yeah. And just, just, just one more thing to hop on to. And so, you know, you obviously want to stay away from the bad teams, but you also want to kind of be looking for teams that have that infrastructure in place that maybe didn't perform quite as well in 2019. Right. So you're looking, you're looking for bounce back teams. So the LA Rams were number two in scoring the previous two years. They were 10 last year. Philly was the number one scoring team in 2017 and the last two years of 20 and 15. Yeah. So I know, I know a lot of that depends on Carson Wentz and how healthy he is. But then you, you look at the San Francisco's, they were three last year after being 18 and 21. So Garoppolo made a pretty big difference there. Dallas was six last year. Mike McCarthy coming in with Dak and Zeke. They should be fine, but they took a big jump up from the previous two years. So you just kind you're kind of looking all around who's going to regress, who's going to, um, you know, progress and be better. And so just just pick players from good teams. I know it's kind of common sense, but that's one of my nuggets. Um, it's a tasty nugget. That was great. And uh, just a little stat, I think that is furthers this whole Edwards Hilaire hype train a little bit. <clears throat> Do you like him? Do you still do you uh, do you still like that your whoever that guy is from Tampa Bay that we haven't even mentioned? Vaughn Keyshawn. Uh, uh, I, I still I still like Vaughn. Yeah, but I mean, I I don't know. There, I to me, I don't think anybody else is going to come close to uh, rookie of the year. I think it's really between those two runners. I don't. Yeah, think- we should look. We should look up and see what their rookie of the year odds are. Uh, maybe put a maybe put a flyer on them from a betting perspective, unless Joe Burrow is truly good and that he's going to win. So just, just right. A thought. But um, yeah, people have also brought up Cam Akers a lot for the for the Rams and McVeigh came out I think in the last week and said that it's going to be a committee. We see all of our backs being used regularly, and so like why I don't want any part of Cam Akers then. I mean, nope. it's a great offense. Whoever the goal line back is, is going to be an, a, a great flex for someone. But I think if you're, and this goes into my point is if you are a part of a committee and this is my nugget is do everything you can to stay away from committee backs. Because I, I think that they re- realistically, what they amount to is like, unreliable flexes slash very low end RB twos. Um, so I think that Edwards Hilaire has an immense opportunity to become, to graduate from the committee and become a three down back. And it's really because I think Damian Williams could not be more mediocre. There were two games last year in which Damian Williams ran for more than a hundred yards 
in those two games, uh, the first being week nine, so you wait eight weeks, yeah, all the way to week nine to go over 100 yards. And it was buoyed by, by a singular 91 yard run. And then oh, that'll help. That'll that'll help. And then and then you wait till week seventeen. So fantasy football's over. Oh God! Against the Chargers, and oh. he rumbled for eighty four yards. Oh, I thought he was going to be so good last year, and he wasn't. Damian Williams averaged four point five yards per carry last year. If you take out those two runs, oh no! If you take out those two runs. His yards per carry goes down from four and a half to 2.9. Damian Williams is not good at football, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to be, he's a great backup. Wonderful. But Edwards Hilaire is going to just take this job. I don't care if he starts on the committee. You know what he's going to be on committee for? One half, not a game, not a game, <laughs> one half. <laughs> like, so I understand the Edwards Lair hype train because people see him and they watch the highlights and he looks like a man child, but they, they see, they saw what Kareem Hunt did in that offense and they're like, holy crap, like, it could be Kareem Hunt. And so I, I completely understand the hype for Edwards Hilaire, but um, I have a short list of running backs who I feel like are not on committees. I have 10. And so I guess my advice would try, it would be to try, if you can get two of them, I think that you're doing a great job. And I think that there's a lot of value here. I don't think that these are going to be the first 10 running backs taken um, because I don't have Edwards Hilaire on that. And we're talking about him, um, him being, you know, now evidently one of the first 10 taken. But I have Saquon, Christian McCaffrey, Josh Jacobs, uh, Fournette, Alvin Kamara, Zeke, Kenyon Drake, Derrick Henry, David Montgomery, and Joe Mixon on here. Um, I have several possibles, I think, that also could be. Um, Miles Sanders, maybe. I, I don't know how much work. Boston Scott is going to get. He was a little more involved at the end of the season than I wanted him to be. Uh, again, Edwards Hilaire, uh, Geis, David Johnson, and Chris Carson. I think Chris Carson. Now, the Seahawks this week, and we didn't include it in our newsy portion of the show, but the Seahawks did make a signing this week. They offered uh, Devonta Freeman. Uh, a one-year deal to which he said no because he countered and they didn't they didn't come close they just said well our offer is our offer and we're not even going to try to match you and uh and so they declined and he said all right well i guess i'm fine sitting out of here if my contract isn't where i'm at <laughs> what yeah yeah i think i think unless our social media coordinator quits i'm going to retire too so, uh, <laughs> you're not happy with your contract <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but they did sign Carlos Hyde, who could not be more of a mediocre signing. Uh, I think it's it, I don't think he's going to touch the ball. I just think I think the only way he gets the ball is if Chris Carson goes in there and fumbles twice in the first half. Just like that's 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 the only reason that Rashad Penny got increased touches last year. Um, so until Penny comes back, I think that it is very much Chris Carson's backfield. Um, so that's my first nug because we're doing nuggets, not tips. Uh, is is to stay away from committee backs if at all possible. Try and get you uh, a couple of these non committee types, and then the wide receiver value is so crazy deep this year. I think I'm probably going to go running back, running back, or running back, tight end, quarterback, and or Lamar, or Lamar. If you want to, if you want to have thoughts on Lamar Jackson, whether or not you should or should not draft Lamar Jackson, listen to our previous podcast, episode two, titled Don't Draft Lamar Jackson. <laughs> we spent which, so much more time than either one of us thought. We spent so much more time than either one of us thought we were going to spend talking about how great Lamar Jackson is, I think. 
Yeah, that, that was only supposed to last 20 minutes and it went an hour. So sorry about that to everybody. Um, He's insane. He's not a quarterback. He's a top 15 running back is what he is. And that's why you should draft him. Um, yeah. Back back to running backs. Back so to running to kind, backs. So to kind of play off your point of who to look for from a running back perspective. Yes, I agree with you from a if they're the workhorse, you want them. But I also want to highlight how important catches are if they're getting receptions and what kind of correlation that has to where they end up the year from a overall perspective. Right. So the top 15 running backs from a reception standpoint, there was only four that did not finish in the top 20. So one of them is Shreek Cohen who finished 33rd, but he was running back 13 in 2018. Yeah. Oh, man. He had such James, an up and, oh, I know, man. He's so James White. James White was running back number 22 last year, but the year before he was running back eight. He was running back eight because of injuries, not because of a normal season where James no, White no, no. James White. No, it wasn't because of injuries. Yeah, Sonny Michelle, Sonny, Michelle was Sonny injured, was so bad. James White started. No. Are you sure? 100%. I had him on my team. Well, but yeah. Okay, he's but yes, he's if, bad. If re- receptions are absolutely paramount to being a top 10 running back, top five, especially in the top three. Like, you're, unless yeah. you're getting the passing down work and you're the workhorse, you don't have a chance. You're not on the yep. field. Um, let, let, me keep, let me keep going. Devontae Freeman was running back 21 last year. And he was number eight from a reception standpoint. So why do I bring that up? Because on your list of uh, non-workhorse backs, you did not include Todd Gurley. And so he had 59 catches last year for the Atlanta Falcons. Matt Ryan likes to check the ball down a lot to Austin Hooper. Oh, he's not there anymore. He also likes to check, check it down to Devontae Freeman. He's not there anymore either. Can I talk early? He's going to get a lot of catches. Can I rename my list to to running backs with knees? (laughs) Oh, man. Can I I, I rename it to the running backs with two knees? (laughs) Hold on. Hold on. I got a nugget for you, Alex. Draft running backs that have two knees. <laughs> that's that's ridiculous. Oh, uh, what's ridiculous is that they only signed Todd freaking Gurley, and they came out and they're like, "Well, I guess the only real question is we don't know where his health is at right now." It's like, who are you signing? Why don't you draft kind of, anyone? What are you doing? <laughs> kind of important. All right, but hold on. All right, no, Devontae, Devontae, Devontae Freeman had 59 catches last year. Do you know how many catches Todd Gurley had when he led all of fantasy football in scoring? He had 59 catches two years really? ago. So they're going to be, you know, if you can just take Todd Gurley, drop him in where Devontae Freeman was. That's he doesn't age. He still has knees. He's beautiful. He's perfect. He's still got talent. He was running back 20. Devontae Freeman was running back 21 last year. And there's no reason why Todd Gurley should not outperform that this upcoming year. Period. 21. This has to happen. Yeah. Devontae Freeman was 21 last year. 59 catches. I'm amazed it was because he's just had so many injuries. I'm surprised it was even that high. Um, Right. Todd, Todd Gurley was 14 last year. And he was kind of bet, you know, they were is he they were hurt, jacking he around his playing time at the beginning of the season. And then eventually they gave him the ball full time and they asked Sean McVay, Well, what were you doing the first few games when you were cutting his they literally said, All right, this drive is Gurley, and then the next drive is Malcolm Brown. And they asked him, I said, Well, why what made you start playing Gurley more? And he's like well, I don't want to be stupid. <laughs> I was being stupid by not playing my best player. Right. But so I, I have a list of running backs who were not in those top 15 and catches correlating to being a top 20 running back. Okay. Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry only had 18 catches last year. He's a man. 
but he was running back three because he had 16 rushing touchdowns. Because it's like yards. tackling a Mack truck. Yes. So, okay. He's kind of an exception to that rule, but here's some other ones. And I'm going to read you off like five or six names here. And I want you to tell me who you think has the best chance of, of having more catches or it doesn't even matter for them. All right. So here's the list. Chris Carson, 22nd in catches last year. Nick Chubb, 24th in catches. Chubb, uh, no Joe, way. Joe, Joe Mixon, 28th in, in catches. Giovanni. All right, so those three? No, nope, uh, I'm going to keep going. Todd, Todd Gurley, number 34. Mark Ingram, number 41. And Josh Jacobs, running back 48 from a from a number of catches standpoint. No, oh, man, I'm going to probably end up asking you to talk or bring up some of these names again, because I have every guy you bring up. I have a thought on why it will or won't happen. Um, Let's start at the top. Chris, Chris Carson, running Chris, back 11 last year, number 22 in catches. I think that he has a chance to have more catches this year without Rashad Penny being healthy. I think that Rashad Penny was the later down back, and that was sort of their split. Um, without him, Carlos Hyde has rocks for hands. So I could see Carson being a full-time back, waiting for Penny to get back, and who knows how long that's going to be, or what Penny, what shape Penny is going to be in when he does come back. All right, next. Yeah. Uh, Nick Chubb. That's Kareem Hunt. There's no way. It's Kareem yeah. Hunt. There's no way. Yeah, he had 36 catches last year. I would expect that to decrease with Kareem Hunt there. I agree. Joe Mixon had 35 catches last year and was running back number 28. There's Giovanni there, but I think really, I think there, the reason that he has low catch numbers is really twofold. One being Giovanni Bernard and two being that team was like a dumpster fire trash keep last year and so they i i mean i'm just gonna i'm gonna guess that they didn't run a whole lot of offensive plays if you look at number of off offensive plays run by each team i'm gonna guess that they were probably pretty well in the bottom third of that and so maybe if the offense turns around with burrow there's a chance that there's more offensive plays there's a chance that Mixon gets more catches i think that it's possible i wouldn't count on it Oh, all right. After, uh, previous mention, Todd Gurley, running back 14 last year, was 34th in catches, Switch teams to the Atlanta Falcons. Personally, I think that's got to go up. Well. I think it has to. He's, I mean, he's going to be a full-time back. They're not going to, they're not going to take out Todd Gurley to put in Edo Smith. So um, yeah, that's definitely going up. Okay. Mark Ingram was the eighth ranked running back last year. He had 26 catches running back 41. Mark Ingram is the exception to every running back rule because he was on such an electric offense, scored touchdowns. I don't think his role is really going to change. I don't think he's going to be back when, when his contract expires, but you know, I think JK Dobbins is the running back of the future there, but I think his role is pretty solid. I don't really see that going down a whole lot. So I'm not sure if he needs the catches and I don't see the catches going up. Okay. I agree. Josh Jacobs, number 18 running back last year, 20 catches running back 48 from a catch perspective last year. Wow. I, you know, I, I knew it was low. I don't know if I knew it was that low. Um, they did yeah, get like run a week. <laughs> yeah. And as a Josh Jacobs owner, it was frustrating to see him come out on third down. Um, I think it's going to go up because they got rid of Washington. He's gone. And Gruden has already come out and said that Josh Jacobs is a three down back and is going to be more involved in the passing game this year. And for that reason, I'm in. I mean, yeah, 100%. yeah DeAndre, Washington, DeAndre Washington had 36 catches for almost 300 yards last year. So if you could add that to what Josh Jacobs is doing, right? Like you, you are looking at a top 10 back easily. Yeah. Uh, and then the, the last one, and we touched on it already a little bit, but Derrick Henry, third best running back last year. He only had 18 catches, 200 yards. I know one of those was against the Browns in week one, which is like an 85 yard jaunt. So he, he didn't really do much outside of week one. Uh, you you have to, I mean, you you have to think that those rushing yards aren't going to really change. I mean, that offense runs through Derrick Henry running through people. <laughs> That's what it does. I don't know if he really needs, if he had catches on top of it, I think he could easily be the number one back in fantasy football, or it's certainly in the top three with a chance of being the number one overall back. Um, it's going to be hard to touch Christian McCaffrey or Saquon. Um 
But yeah, if he could get catches somehow, that would be amazing. But I don't, I don't see him getting catches. Yeah. And then, so again, that, that's my nugget. You got, you want guys that have receptions. I will also say this, that Austin Eckler had 92 catches last year and Melvin Gordon had 42 catches last year. So if, if they even have something of a similar offense, I know they're going to have either Tyrod or, or rookie uh, who nobody really cares about at this point start. I mean, if, if you add those two together, it's 130 catches from a running back. Uh, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm just saying. See, I'm glad that you brought this team up being the LA chargers because they are extremely polarizing. I think um, everybody is on the hype train for Austin Eckler, Eckler, Eckler. I have no idea, but I say Eckler. <laughs> <laughs> but the, everybody's on the hype train as if he's a surefire RB two because he's going to have a million and a half catches. I think that he had a million and a half catches because he had Philip Rivers throwing him the football, and Philip Rivers is a checkdown machine who is going to be, still be a checkdown machine in Indy this year. I wish they had one running back that was going to be responsible for running the ball instead of a committee, but oh well. Um, uh, N- Naheem Hines for the Colts last year at 44 catches. Well, they're already saying how Hines is going to be an absolute monster this year. Like the, the, the team has already come out and said that, but I mean, it's going to be a three back committee that I don't want a part of, but with the back to the chargers, Tyrod is not close to the same quarterback as Phil rivers. It's to me, it's going to be the same change that the Vikings saw when they went from case Keenum's, uh, Case Keenum to Kirk Cousins. <laughs> Case Keenum made Adam Thielen the the wide receiver one that he is, and because he loves throwing to the slot, and he leaves, Kirk Cousins comes in, and Adam Thielen sees his work dry up, and he basically had to blow up and put stuff in the media saying I need the ball more, and then he started getting the ball more. But there's just ways that certain people play their position. And Tyrod is an active mobile quarterback who I think is going to try to run and maybe ex- extend plays and do stuff. So I don't know if I really see him just automatically throwing swing passes and checkdowns to Eckler. Yeah, I agree. It's possible. I, I, I think he's a solid RB two just because of the catches thing and what we talked about is and the workload. If he, if right, I mean, if he's going to have fifty catches, when uh, he had ninety two catches last year. That's close insane. to a thousand yards and, and eight touchdowns just receiving. So w- without Melvin there, uh, is Justin Jackson still there as, as the backup to, to and even when, so, and even when Gordon sat out those games because he was mad about his contract, Justin Jackson showed that he's nothing compared to Eckler anyway. So I'm still, right. I mean, uh, yeah, he's definitely an RB two. I just wish, I wish they still had Phillip rivers because then it's like he could be a top, six running back top 10, you know, easily. Yep. Yeah. So, he was six last year and, and top three before Melvin came back. Yeah. So it, it's going to be interesting to see where he goes in drafts. Cause I think you can probably get him in the second round. If I, if I had to guess second, third. Um, now my next tidbit is draft related and it is that and waiver related. Basically, Stay away from drafting defenses early. Nobody is going to be able to predict who the number one defense is because the number one fantasy defense never repeats year over year. Um, Ever. (laughs) Literally ever. So why try to guess? And part of the reason to me why the Patriots had the number one defense last year was because how good Tom Brady and the offense was. So without Tom Brady, who knows? how efficient that offense is even going to be. So I I stay away from drafting defenses early, draft them in the last two rounds, defense kicker in that order, and then play matchups. Um, But don't make one critical mistake, which is spending fab and spending waiver claims on defenses. You instead should look a week ahead 
maybe two weeks ahead. Maybe you see what teams have easy schedules based on win loss percentage and you pick them up and you hold a player or you hold a defense at the end of your bench for a week or two and you save yourself the fab that you so desperately need throughout the season or come playoff time. So that's, that's one of my uh, nugs, if you will. Your, your nugget is to be smart with your sauce allocation so you don't run out of sauce before you're done with all your nuggets because then you have to go find more sauce. And if you've used your waiver or if you use all your fab, you have no more sauce. <laughs> yes. That's, right? That's, yeah, that's exactly. Right. You're picking up what I'm putting down. Here. Yeah. Keep your sauce. You Keep want to your save sauce. your sauce for the special occasions. <laughs> We're gonna, all right. Uh, and if you go to our social media after listening to this podcast, you're going to find a link that, to where you can buy T-shirts that say, save your sauce. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're in it for the memes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> all right. Save your sauce. So let's talk a little bit about. Why fantasy football? Why should you consider playing fantasy football? If you don't play, why you should try to talk friends into playing fantasy football with you if they don't play. I have a ton of really close friends that don't play fantasy football or they do, but not with me. And I want to play in a league with them. Um, and, and I think that, you know, by listening to this portion, you're going to figure out a little bit more about who we are and why we play and why this podcast, because this podcast happened because of our fantasy football league. Um, so let's start with that story. Actually, Alex, do you want to retell how the uh, the tuxedo fitting for the wedding led into this? Oh, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, we were both going to stand up in, uh, in our, one of our good friend's weddings and who's in our uh, fantasy football league. All of his yeah. groomsmen are guys in the fantasy football league. <laughs> True. Yeah. So it's, it's all of us, you know, we've been doing it together for 15, 10, 15 years. Mm, and it's yeah. one of those things where, where we kind of looked at each other and was like, Hey, let's just start this and figure out what, what happens. And, uh, I was like, all right, fine. Uh, you know, you're, it was more, more your idea. And, you know, it's something that I've been talking about. I mean, my, my cousins who are avid listeners of this think I'm the smartest one in the family when it comes to fantasy football. So they're very peaked uh, to hear what I have to say on a weekly basis about it so that, so that maybe they can win their other leagues because they know they're not winning the one that they're in with me. There you go. So, That's right. Smack yeah. down. What's up, Krogue family? Yeah, no. suck on that. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, just playing fantasy football has made me, you know, such a better watcher of football. Yeah. So, like, you know, if, if you have a running back on your team and they have to be playing in, in you know, one of the nationally televised games, all you're going to do instead of watching the football, which is what you normally do when you're watching a football game is you watch the football is you watch the, the individual players. Yeah. So, so if you're going to watch a running back, it's a passing play. You're going to notice if he's staying in and blocking, you're going to notice if he's running a pattern, if he's running a pattern, which way is he running the pattern? And when the ball's thrown, if it's in that general vicinity, you're like, that's my guy. So it's, it's one of those things where it's, it's definitely made me just better at watching wide receiver routes understanding where the defense is playing things. So if you have a wide receiver and he's at the top of the screen and their safety is shaded up to the top of that screen, or if better yet, if the safety shaded down to the bottom of the screen and you have one of the top receivers in football, you know where the ball is going and it's yeah. generally going to be your guy. If you so see you your guys in single coverage and you're like, Oh my God, please throw it to him. Please throw it throw to him. And, him then, the ball. and then it happens and you're screaming at your television because somebody in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers got a touchdown and you are a bears fan in Chicago. <laughs> yeah. And, and you could see it coming. Yeah, so like right. if, if, if you're sitting there on your couch with a beer in your hand and you know, you've already inhaled seven of eight Beverage pieces of pizza choice. from, from little Caesars or whatever kind of pizza you're, you're paying for, <laughs> the, not <like>, sponsor <laughs> Jack's, Jack's pizza? Ah, there you go. 
So uh, if, like if, if you can see a play developing from your couch, you know, the players on the field can see the play too, because they're actually doing film study all week. They know what coverage they're getting. Yeah. So it's, it's just really cool if you can see it happen. Um, and so that's one of the things that fantasy football has definitely done for me is it just made me understand the game a lot better. Um, and I've tried to like explain things to my wife just as she's like, what are you talking about? And then I, I try to explain what I'm, what I'm watching, but it's, it's something that it takes literally years to understand live. You know, I, I still think back to when Gronk scored a touchdown in the Super Bowl because I'm sitting there thinking about him every, every week. And he's got single so coverage Tom. on the right. Yeah. So does Tom. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks Peyton. Uh, and you know, you can see Gronk one-on-one coverage and I'm calling it out in the Super Bowl. He's got one-on-one coverage on a linebacker. You know, Brady's going to throw the ball there. And the next second, you know, it's a 35 yard touchdown and I'm going crazy. And people are like, what is going on? How did he know that? You know, it's, it's yeah. just one of those things where, where you can brag. And speaking of bragging, that's that's another reason that I love to play fantasy sports is because I like being right. So if it's if you win and you're right, you can kind of shove it in all your friends' faces and get those bragging rights. Well, especially if you uh, end up winning a, a league title <laughs> and and you have a friend who finishes as the sacco, <clears throat> then then there's so much more, you know just camaraderie embarrassment having fun and really that's if it wasn't fun to do then i don't think anybody would do it but fantasy football yep. to me is just so much freaking fun um i love the aspect or or how it's led to relationships um being maintained that otherwise wouldn't be maintained i know that i'm friends with you know many people across the various fantasy football leagues that I'm in. I used to live, you know, halfway across the country and I'm still in a league with all of the friends that I made while I lived there for a few years. And shout out in, Pittsburgh. Yeah. Shout out Pittsburgh. And if I didn't live in the Pittsburgh area or if I wasn't in fantasy football with them or in various other fantasy leagues, I would not have any real relationship with them anymore. And so, and I haven't lived there in four years. So, or before, longer than that, it's been seven actually. Man, it goes quick. Feeling old, it really goes quick. Um, people, I know people that have met their now significant other in fantasy football leagues. Like met at the draft, they were a friend of a friend, and now they're dating, and they've been together since the last football season started. Like was, it's amazing. Was, hold on, was was that a different kind of draft? Did they leave football out of that one? They drafted each other different? on that night. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> They were, they were the late round picks. <laughs> oh the, my the steal, steal of the draft. Steal of the draft. There you go. Yeah, bo boomer bust. They need to sleeper. sleeper. If I swear, if they end up getting married, I swear they need to have a fantasy football themed wedding because that would just be the craziest thing. Um, but keeping up with friends, and then I love the fact that as a Bears fan, my team. Hasn't Sucks done most all of that. The time. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And as we were talking before the show, a friend recently posted something on Facebook about how the Packers have won the NFC North, you know, six of the last 10 years. And in that same graphic showed the Bears two conference wins. Um, but so, you know, a lot of the time, my team. And yet they've, and yet they've only won one Super Bowl. Such a shame. <sighs> Yeah, and, and well, their performance in Super Bowl XLI was even more of a shame. Like, oh, man. But it gives you other teams and other players to root for if your team isn't doing that great. And as a Bears fan, that's a huge fringe benefit because, I mean, <laughs> if, if you're eliminated in like week 10, 11, 12, you don't have a shot and you're probably out of, you know, wild card unless you went out. It's really just not realistic. It gives you something to watch. It gives you something to talk about and root for. You're rooting for other players, for other teams. You're rooting for your team against other players. It's just it's such a great thing i it, whoever invented invented <laughs> fantasy sports was a genius because this is the greatest thing i think you know that there is and and like with the creation of red zone uh you know on yes. a sunday afternoon when you know these games are just go you know they're scoring all over the place 
you know, a lot of us have our phones up all day checking, you know, every carry matters, every catch matters, every pass matters. Uh, and so, you know, when, when you have the red zone bringing you live highlights and jump into games as somebody's, you know, scoring an 80 yard touchdown because they just caught a bomb and your phone hasn't even updated yet. That's like the essence of like, give me that. It's, it's a, it's an adrenaline rush. Am I allowed to say that? I'm, I'm a junkie for that, for that moment of when your player that you were trying to decide whether to start or not start that week. Oh, don't can, even can, talk can, to me about that. Oh, that, that hour. No, no. The, the hour and a half. Hour. It's the, it's the hour and a half because the, the do not playlist comes out like an hour and a half, 90 minutes before kickoff. Mm-hmm. And so up to that 90 minute time, I'm like, is my guy going to play? Is he not going to play if you have a hurt or questionable player? But then in that time, it's like, am I starting the right people? Because I don't know about you, but I look at my team and I always have like one or two week starts because every team has one or two week spots. That's because your draft sucked. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I look at my team and then I look at my bench and then I look at free agency. I'm like, is this who I want to start? Is this the defense I want to go with? Like, is this the kicker that I want to, to go with? Also, uh, I'm going to call our commissioner out <laughs> because he happens to be <laughs> you know, uh, on the podcast, <clears throat> Alex. If your fantasy league has kickers, please have a sit down conversation with your commissioner about why kickers should not be involved in fantasy football leagues because they don't belong. A kicker should never kicking points are the most inflated, one sided, game changing, unfair way to win or lose something based on an arbitrary person drafted in the last round who can go out and score Rob Barona's 30 some odd points and win, sing, win you a freaking fantasy football week single handedly. And it's trash. Rob it, is, it is all freaking trash. So if you have a kicker in, if you are required to play a kicker in your fantasy football league, you can do a silent protest by not starting one and still winning against people that start kickers. That is, I, uh, that's on tap for me this year. I hate just, that we just, have kickers. J- just a quick retort to that. Uh, I love uh, kickers. So um, if there's any kickers listening, you I love, appreciate you. You love kickers? Yep, you can kick. Yeah, you can kick Jason in the nuts uh, anytime <laughs> you want. Also, um, I would just like to point out that uh, I'm, I'm a big, big no, fan of the no, trash. In the nugs. In the, in the oh, nugs. Oh, sorry. In the nugs. Sorry. <laughs> Miss, that was Miss such Bush. an opportunity there. <laughs> You'll get I like there. I'm on top, yeah, I feel like I'm on top of things today, too. Sorry. <laughs> so, so kickers are great. I'm, I'm a big fan of all the trash. I'm basically the trash man. Uh, anyway, I can get you. Bird man, trash man, fits. Fits tragic. I mean, yep. I'm a man of many trash. nicknames so far. We're doing, we're doing all right, man. So what, one thing I would like to point out as a reason to play fantasy football, and it's probably one that not a lot of people think about, but it's something that I plan on trying to start this year is doing oh. it with my wife uh, and, and getting in a league where I can play with play with her. Is that the right terminology? I, I'm just, good. I'm enjoying all of this. Please continue. Yeah, boy. Tell oh, me boy. what you want so, to do with your wife again. Yeah. No, <laughs> that's, that, back to the fantasy league. Uh, uh, fantasy, fantasy football. I can't wait to see the, the YouTube for anybody that uh, doesn't know. We are also on YouTube. Please watch us on YouTube. Uh, if you, if you choose to, or if you would rather enjoy a visual podcast where you can see our beautiful faces, I have sweat running down my face right now. Um, (laughs) And I just can't wait to see the YouTube analytics about you talking about playing with your wife, but uh, uh, continue. uh, So, you know, she got into fantasy football last year for the first time and really enjoyed it. It was something for us to talk about. Um, And to be honest with you, she was the one that had her phone up uh, on a Saturday night, checking her rosters to make sure that anybody on a bye week was getting replaced looking at injuries, looking at projected points and started learning, you know, just, it was her first year. She had no 
thoughts about anyone or anything, but I'll tell you that she ended up disliking some people and liking some people, which is what ends up happening when you play fantasy football. And so, yep. you know, it was, it was just fun to watch her kind of get the introduction into, you know, drafting Jared Goff, Jared Goff, not being good, dropping Jared Goff, Jared Goff oh. scoring a bunch of points the week after she drops him and being like, why didn't he do that on my team? So <laughs> it's, it's just one of those things where I, I want to encourage people to get in a, just a fun, friendly league where yeah. uh, you can do it with your significant other. Cause it, it gives you guys something to talk about. You can, you can talk smack, um, you know, it's, and it's one of those things as much as like, and I don't want to make this like guys or girls thing, but it's like guys think they know sports better, but whenever you seem to do a March madness pool, uh, you know, who wins well over 50% of the time. It's generally the women that do, um, or at least in my experience, maybe it's because I suck at picking. Friends. Yeah. I, I had a pool. I was in a pool for March Madness and the, the team that ended up winning won because when they picked the, which team was going to win each of the rounds, they picked based on which of the Jersey colors and like the jerseys they liked the most. And I was like, what is that how we're doing sports <laughs> there's a there's a lot of different ways to win um, yeah. and and the thing is it's like as much as we don't really think about it you do look for things to do with your spouse so yeah like, absolutely you're always thinking, you know you're always thinking about like hey where should we go out to eat you know what are we going to do this weekend um you know where are you going to go maybe and i'm just saying and my wife will probably listen to this and maybe she'll figure out my tricks but it's like if i could get her more invested in fantasy football and maybe she'll want to sit down and watch football on a Sunday afternoon. And then I don't have to go do anything on a Sunday afternoon. I can watch football. Oh my God. I'm just saying it's, see, it's, almost, see. Like, it's almost like inception. You're like the Zen. You're the Mr. Miyagi of this. And I am the Padawan. I, so it's not for lack of trying. I have basically, I have asked several times if my fiance would like to, join me in a fantasy football league and uh i've gotten i've gotten shut down <laughs> on that to this point because she just I, I don't think she's really honestly just truly interested which is fine but yeah. however she is a huge football fan and she is a huge green bay packers fan which I, you know, everybody so, has so their draft Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Jones, uh, yeah, well, uh, Devon, right? Just yeah. take all of them. Yeah. You know? Well, a couple of years ago, I had the I had Aaron Jones on my team, and so I'm I'm sitting there. We're watching the Packers play football, and I am rooting for Aaron Jones to score. And at one point, like we're watching the Bears Packers game, and the Packers are on inside the five yard line, and I'm like. Okay, but they're going to score here. Just if somebody's going to score on the Packers, like can it can it just be Aaron Jones? Yeah. Please, can we pl can we please free Aaron Jones? So that free him. Uh, yeah, free him. And so then she's like, "What do you mean free Aaron Jones?" And I'm like explaining <laughs> what the free Aaron Jones movement is to a Packers fan lifelong. And so it's like it's just it's crazy because all of these things would just never happen were it not for fantasy football. Um, right. Do you have any final thoughts that you'd like to share about why somebody should consider fantasy sports or fantasy football in, in specifically? Yeah. So fantasy football is for me, the easiest thing to do because there's not a 182 game season or an 82 yeah. game season yes. when, when you're looking at baseball or basketball, you know, foot, football, it's, you know, I know it starts on Thursdays, um, but it's, it's more condensed. So it's, it's easier to handle of all the fantasy of all the fantasy sports. And genuinely, like, it's just fun. It, it doesn't take that much upkeep um, for somebody that's just starting out. And it's it's pretty easy to learn. It's it's generally very... Um, it, it can be rewarding, but it's, it's just another thing to be competitive in uh, when we all like to be competitive. You know, once you're... I always said 30 was kind of the old factor. But it's yeah. like, once you're 30, like, it's, it is hard to, like, go out and... and get the competitive juices flowing. And so you can get that adrenaline or entertainment um, kind of watching a game within the game. And so it's, it's just another thing to do. And it, it can be a lot of fun if you make it fun. And if you're, if it's not fun, you have to figure out a way to make it fun. Absolutely. 
I love fantasy sports. I love the fact that it has, you know, brought people together. It's maintained relationships. It's spawned this random podcast. Who knows? I mean, I want I want to do it for the foreseeable future. Hopefully you feel the same. <laughs> I don't really know if I would want to do one by myself or without, you know, a co-host. I love the the dialogue, the conversation. You and yeah. I sit around and talk fantasy football regularly leading up and throughout the season anyway. And this is, if anything, it's I view it as a lot of the same conversation just recorded. So I, you know, I am so thankful for fantasy football, fantasy sports, and everything that uh, it's brought and maintained, you know, to my life. So, um, yeah, it's just right. It, it passes time. It's entertaining, and it, yeah. it can be rewarding and somewhat lucrative, depending on how you uh, how you approach it. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. With that, we are going to uh, go to our lovely social media page. If you guys could please follow the Fantasy Football Sackos on Twitter. We are on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Well, there is a TikTok out there. Rumors have it. Um, we are at the FF Sackos on all social media platforms. Please follow us. Please watch us on YouTube if you would prefer. And as always, like, subscribe, ring the bell, do what you got to do. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Have a good night. Save your sauce. Save your sauce. (laughs) (laughs) Save the nugs. Peace. Peace.